Help us to keep our minds in perfect peace, Lord, oh, Father God, so we may know your perfect will in us, Lord, and just move forward, oh, Father God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, just for being God, because without you, Lord, we can't do nothing, Lord. And, oh, Father God, we ask to continue to look upon our families, Lord, oh, Father God. Look at their hearts, oh, Father God. The ones that's not saved, we ask you, dear Jesus, to just give them a word, Lord, oh, Father God. Let them know they need you, oh, God. Oh, Father God, because some of them is just out there like they don't know you, God. Oh, Father God, but you are God. And you could deliver anyone from any situation, Lord. Oh, Father God, we praise you this morning. Oh, Father God, those that are sick and in the hospital, Lord, we ask you, dear Jesus, to touch them, Lord, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord. You say, by your stripes we were healed, Lord. Oh, Father God, we claim in healing right now. Oh, Father God, we ask you, dear Jesus, those that's going through, oh, Father God, we ask you to continue to touch their hearts. Give them that peace that surprises all understanding, Lord, oh, Father God. Keep their hearts in perfect peace, Lord, oh, Father God, so may, they may go through it knowing that you are God and you're going to keep them, oh, Father God. Lord, oh, Father God, and as we go into your word this morning, as we hear your word, oh, Father God, we ask you, dear Jesus, to let us receive that word this morning, oh, Father God. Touch someone, oh, Father God. Let them leave the way they didn't come in this morning, oh, Father God. And we ask you, dear Jesus, so when we receive your word, Lord, let us be here, doers of your word, Lord, and not just hearers only, oh, Father God. And we may put those words into action, oh, Father God, and live as you want us to, Lord, so we could please you, Lord, oh, Father God. We bless you this morning. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We now have our scripture by Miss Gloria. read from John 1 verses 1 to 13 at the back of your program or in the Bible in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light sinned in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Here in the reading of the Holy Word. We'll have the announcement. Our announcement are as follows. We have our Sunday school at 9.30, Sunday morning. Tuesday, we have Bible study by Pastor Boom. Thursday, we have our beginners class. and. Sunday morning, we have 6 o'clock prayer. Um, Calvary Holiness Church will be holding a breakfast November 8th at 9.30 in the morning. At, um, and the, the cost is $12. Keep that in mind. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I think I'm going to need a little volume on this one, Maria, babe. Yeah. Hallelujah.
want everybody to see that gorgeous face. No hiding. <laughs> and a little testing, one, two. I'd say that was some volume. <laughs> you know, every now and then we have to start all over. Okay. Hey, yeah. Hallelujah. This one don't like me much. Hallelujah. Yay, yes. I think that's a little better. Now, what I was about to say, every now and then, we can turn it down just a smidgey, I think, Maria. We're not gonna worry about that at all. Every now and then, we gotta switch up a little bit, was what I'm trying to say this morning, praise the Lord. And get the blood moving. And get a little joy going in your heart. Because sometimes it gets so thick throughout the week, you just need to be able to say, okay, Lord, I need a little joy. I need, I need a little pick-me-up. So that's what we're doing today. So regardless of what you were going through this week and what stresses that was hanging over your head, that you know that God will release them from you, give you joy in your heart, and just lift your spirits up. And so that's what we're doing today. We are trying to do a little lift of the spirits. And get everybody up on high, yes. And all on one accord. So if you feel like standing, okay, that's an awesome deal. Stand up and clap your hands and stomp your feet and wave your arms in the air. Whatever feel good to you right now to make you happy and get that blood moving. So the Lord can come into your mind, heart, and spirit. But if you can't do it, then you just sit there and you nod your head. And you wave your hands every now and then. And whatever feels good. But this is that time right now. Come on, come on, make your heart smile so the Lord can smile at you, yes. All right. It's all about building your life with joy so you can spread it to others so they too can have joy. Come on, come on, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we glorify you and we live. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I want to lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Oh, Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm gonna lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm gonna lift you up. All right, all right. Now I need some more up in this song. I need a little bit more of a pick me up. Cause I'm there right now. Come on, boys. Oh, yes. Come on. Come on, yes. Come on, let the light in and let it shine on us. Let that joy come through. And I'm not just talking about sitting there and nodding your head. Just spit. See. Let your heart dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is the privilege. I'm gonna lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is the privilege. I'm gonna lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is the privilege. I'm gonna lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm gonna lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty power, glory, Jesus. I'm gonna lift you up. 
glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Oh, glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Glory, glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Lord, Lord, be glorified, you mighty, power, power worthy, yeah, yeah. Jesus. I'm going to lift you up, oh, glory, Lord, honor, mighty, you up. power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up, glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up, glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up, glory, honor, Mighty power, by you worthy, Jesus. I'm gonna lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty power, worthy, Jesus. I'm gonna lift you up. I'm gonna lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty power, worthy, Jesus. I'm gonna lift you up. 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 One more time. I'm gonna lift you up. Did that does that feel a little bad better? Do you feel a little lifted right now? Do you feel like lifting yes. up the name of Jesus yes. right now? Yes. All right, all right, all right. It's all about you and the Lord. Yes, it is. It's all about that personal relationship you got going on, yes. you and God. Every step of the way, every minute of your day, everything that runs through your mind. You need to be chatting with the Lord on that, not your best friend. Not anybody else. It's just chat with the Lord and just talk to him about every little, little thing. Just take it to him. Because that's what they talk, that's what the word says about praying continuously and keeping the Lord on your mind continuously. Yes. Just keep talking to him and let him know that you are, you are dedicating your life and your walk to him. And that you're doing the best that you possibly can so the world can see it and they too can live it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you glory. I want your glory. Less of me and more of you, Lord, is what I need. Show me your glory. Show me your power Less of me and more of you Lord is what I need So many times I tried my way But all of the pain wouldn't go away so true so many times I tried my way but all of the pain wouldn't go and go and wouldn't go away I realize that only you can give me this love that is so true 
I need it, Lord, yes, I do. Amen. I need it, Lord, I need your power, Lord, I need your power. I need you to show me, Lord, right now, right now, right now. What it is you want me to do, how you want me to be, where you want me to go. I need you, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, to show me, Lord, to show me, show me, show me, show me, show me, Lord. I need you, I need you. Yes, I need you, Lord. Yes, I need you. Yes, I need you, Lord. Yes, I do. Because no one else can be there for me like you do, Lord. Yes, I need you. the song, sing it with us. Show me, Lord, show me your glory. Oh, Lord, show me your power. Show me your power. Less of me, Lord, and more of you, yes. Less of me and more This is what I need. Is what I need. Show me, Lord, show me your glory.
less of me and more of you is what I need. Hallelujah. So many times Jesus. I tried my way. Hallelujah. But all of the pain Hallelujah. wouldn't go away. Hallelujah. I realized, church, that only God Jesus. can give you the love that is so true. Just ask him to show you. He will give it to you. Ask him to show you. Yeah. And receive him. Because the more you receive him, you receive it all. He'll give you everything you want, need, and desire. Because you need his glory. Tell him to show you his glory. You need all of his power. Tell him to show you his power. Because long as there's less of you and more than the Lord, he'll give you what you need. Show me. Let's put your hands together for the Lord. Do you need more of the Lord? Do you need him to show you his power? Do you need him to show you yes, Lord. the glory? His glory. If you all you have to do is just ask him. And let him know I need him. I need you, God. I need you, God. I need you in every way, shape. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's Hallelujah. praise him. Lord. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make some noise for the Lord in this house. Let him know Jesus. that we love him and Hallelujah. we adore him. We want him to smile on us. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. As you know, this is that time that is set aside so that we can um, take up our offering. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you happy? Are you happy today, right now? I know I am. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless. The Lord with me. Come on, come on, come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. 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 H
Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on, come on, come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and shout before the Lord. Come on and shout before the Lord. Come on, come on, come on and shout before the Lord. Come on and shout before the Lord. Come on, come on, come on and shout before the Lord. Come on and shout before the Lord. Come on, come on, come on and shout before the Lord. Come on and shout before the Lord. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, come on and. Hallelujah. Come on, come on and dance with me. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and sing your praise. Hallelujah. Come on and do your dance. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. <laughs> I'm here to introduce our speaker. Um, nobody in here is new, so everybody knows who our speaker is. He is our pastor. He's our spiritual father. He is our example of a man of God. Um, He's leaving us for a while to go on vacation again, so this is our good word before he goes. So everybody soak it in, get your cups out, get all that you can, because it's going to be a while before we hear from him again. So I present to everybody our own pastor, Samuel D. Boone.
Amen. Ain't nothing like some of that Caribbean music to kind of shake you up. I mean, you don't have to come from across the water to have that mood inside your soul to feel so good, you know. And, and the thing is, it seems like it just stirs up everybody, doesn't it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. How many of y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Well, I tell you, I don't, I don't want to waste a moment of time of life that God has placed within me to enjoy every moment, every second, every hour of his goodness. How many of y'all praise God for that? God is a good God, isn't he? He's worthy to be praised. Amen. We're going to, if you have your programs or if you have your Bible, we're going to go to the book of St. Luke, a familiar story. St. Luke, the 15th chapter. We're going to read from verse 11 through verse 24. If you have to read it in the Word, would you please stand for the Word of God. Luke 15, verse 11 through verse 24. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his livings. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he said, sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would have faint have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fat, kill it, and let us eat and marry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and to be merry. Amen. Let's bow heads for a moment of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this moment and for this hour, Lord, to be used as an instrument in your hand and unto your glory and unto your praise. Lord, open unto us the words of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let your word go forth. Let it build up. Let it encourage. Let it heal. Let it convict. Father, we pray and we ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are thanking you for what we're going to receive in Jesus' name. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. We're talking about the lost son. We give honor to the Spirit of Christ. Teaching everyone, the deacons, the saints, and friends, we thank God for you being here and being in our services this morning. You know, um, I often wonder why it seems like I don't have, as I should, a more yearning, a more, how you would say, a restlessness in me about lost souls. It seems like we're more concerned about my conditions and things going on in my life than I am about lost souls. Can you say to yourself, do you really feel like you're giving God excellent service when it comes to witnessing, try to win lost souls? Can you look at yourself and say, I, I did what the Lord called me to do and, and don't feel ashamed about yourself? Sometimes I look and I say, Lord, I didn't get nobody this month. Or I didn't get nobody three months, and, and I wonder, I say to myself, why don't you feel broken or depressed about that? You know, we, we get depressed about other things, but we don't seem to be bothered about lost souls. 
And the thing about God is God got a yearning, a deep down drive to want to win the lost. You got to say ain't nobody like God because God has a, a love that's unexplainable. And the fact that anybody would send their only begotten son to save somebody like me or you, you would say to yourself, they must be loved me. And when you look and you think about it, God really loves sinners. <laughs> he really do. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. You know, when you think about lost for eternity, because once they leave this world, and if they don't have Christ in their life, they are lost for eternity. Eternity is not 100 years. It's not 150 years. It's not 200 years. It's not 1,000 years. It's not a million years. It's not a billion years. Eternity has no number of time attached to it. And then to think about where they're going to be for eternity. It's not the fire that I'm concerned about. It's not the heat. It's not the worms. Huh? It's not even the demons. I'm not even concerned about that. I'm not even concerned about hell itself. What's really disappointing is that you're going to be eternally separated from God. That, to me, is hell. Huh? Because when you think about it, Jesus didn't sweat because of the sinners doing the things they did to him. He didn't sweat because the nails that was going to be put in his hands. He didn't sweat because of all the jokes they was going to make about his life. What he sweated was because at a moment in his life, he was going to be separated from the Father. That worried him so. He said, I feel so depressed. I feel so down. I feel like life itself is getting out of me. And, and the Bible said he sweat like drops of blood. And, 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 and it wasn't for the fear of what was coming on. It was for what was a had to take place in order to save someone like us. I didn't know being separated from God meant so much until I saw Jesus in the garden praying. You, don't, you know, God told Adam, he said, he said, the day that you eat thereof, he said, thou shalt surely die. I don't think Adam really understood death in the sense that he's going to now be separated from God. I don't think people in the world understand that you are actually walking in a world thinking you're alive, but you are actually spiritually dead because why? You're separated from God. That's the worst thing that could happen in you. You can have cancer. You can have HIV. You can have some of the worst kind of things happen to you in life, but it won't be as bad as being separated from God. He calls it lost and God don't want to see nobody lost now understand why angels rejoice over one sinner that repentance they they understand boy you sure got yourself out of a lot you sure missed a whole heap of trouble a whole heap of suffering you sure missed a lot of things and you are coming into something that's more than what you deserve huh I understand now why they rejoice over just one sinner that repentance. When you look at what's waiting for the lost, it should drive you to go out there and try to win every one of them that you can. Shouldn't you? You should get on your knees and pray every night, Lord. And you should be that person who will want them to be like you, huh? Because. Some of God's people, we don't even care how we live. We got to learn that. We got to live. We got to set the example in order to win somebody. Huh? A lot of people won't come to the law because they're looking at us. Ain't that a shame? They say, you so nasty, I don't want to get saved. You so terrible, I don't want to get saved. If that's love, then I don't need no love like that. <laughs> you say, what love got to do with it? <laughs> huh? But you see, the thing is, God... He loves, and he loves in a way that we can't really explain. <clears throat> when we look at this text, 
You wonder why Jesus spoke this parable. Most people, they know about the prodigal son or the, the wasteful son. This parable was brought about because of some people who were religious made a statement to Jesus. And you look in the first two verses of the 15th chapter of St. Luke, and it says this here. It says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners, for to hear him. That's, that's, an, that's, that's in itself is something we ought to jump up and down. Because they came to hear him. The people who we think don't want to listen to God. The people who we think don't want to hear God's word. The Bible says they came to hear him. And then it said, and the, the religious people, the Pharisees and the scribes, they begin to mumble saying, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And then the Bible said he spake this parable. He spake three of them about it. The first one was about the lost sheep in the first seven verses. The next one was about the lost corn in verses 8 and 10. And then he spoke about the lost son. You see, these religious people despise people. You know, you get so holy, you don't want to be around sinners. <laughs> you get so holy, you don't want to get. I heard someone once, one saint told me one time, he said, I can't go to the beach because sinners get in the water. He said, because I got to get out that water when they get in that water. I was saying to myself, good gracious of life. Boy, you holy. <laughs> huh? He said, because the sinners get in the water, he got to get out the water. Huh? And you can get so holy till you think that because you hang around sinners, that you're going to be like a sinner. But the thing is, it shouldn't be you fearing to be like them. They should fear to be like you. Huh? You see, Jesus lived in such a life that the sinners wanted to be around him. Because you can live so holy, sinners don't want to be around you. You know that? You can be so lovely and so kind and so sweet until don't nobody want to know you. <laughs> don't want to be around you. And when they see you coming, they ain't running because you're a Christian. They're running because of your attitude. They say, if that's a Christian, I'm getting out of here. Huh? But you see, the thing about Jesus, Jesus lived in a sense that he didn't make people feel belittled. He didn't make people feel like he, I'm better than you. He didn't look down on people's, huh? He made them feel comfortable around him, huh? And you know, we can get so holy that people can get uncomfortable around. I get uncomfortable around some saints, y'all. Some of y'all so holy. I, I, I say, ooh, standing on holy ground. <laughs> I, 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 got to, I got to get out of here, huh? Some folks, they just that away. Every word. Holy Lord, Jesus. I say, oh, Lord. Every other word, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, praise Lord. Oh, I say, well, good gracious. Huh? I got to wait on and see what the Lord say. I say, well, good gracious. They scare me. They open up the door. They say, hallelujah. I close the door. They say, thank you, Jesus. They, they walk by the flower. Oh, beautiful flower. Lord, they made this. I mean, they just go crazy. So folks think they, they, they just too weird. You understand? And I get nervous around those kind of people. You be wondering if, if you say something, if you do something, you act a certain way, you're going to offend them. Oh, why did you do that? Oh, you laid your Bible on the floor. Oh, my goodness. How did you do something? Oh, Lord, let me get this, get this right up right quick. I won't go to hell for that. But that's how some people are. You ain't going to draw nobody like that. Nobody going to want to hear what you got to say. But when you act like you ain't no better than nobody, and you know that you yourself was a miracle, you know that you yourself was brought from a mighty long ways. <laughs> Whew. Well, you know you yourself was so deep in a cave until if God didn't call you out that cave, you stayed in there until you died. Huh? When you begin to realize where God brought you from, then you don't forget about what's around you need just as much help or more than what you have. Huh? I thank God for love. I thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. Thank God because he's been such a good and a kind God. And God loves us. You hear me? God loves us. And so Jesus, when he came, he was trying to demonstrate and illustrate to the religious peoples and everybody Show them how God loves sinners. He don't want them to be afraid. You know, we, we preach hell and damnation all day long. You ain't going to get too many folks like that. But when you tell folks how much God loves them, 
then they begin to start being interested and want to come and give their lives to the Lord. God loves all of us. And some of us, God knows. I'm, I think the world happy we say. I believe so. I believe the world happy. <laughs> I believe some saints still happy. Because the Bible says when, when uh, uh, Saul got saved, <laughs> the church had rest. That means that Paul really got on them folks' mind, word them folks to death. Paul was somebody, everybody got on their knees and said, Lord, strike him, kill him, get rid of him. They didn't know about asking God to save him. But when God saved him, God, the Bible said they was afraid of him even after he got saved. But God is good. And I know a lot of people in your family so thankful that God got you saved. You don't have to tell me. I know everybody got some black sheep in their family. And I know some of y'all, some of y'all, I ain't going to say all of y'all, but some of y'all, y'all sisters and brothers are glad God saved y'all, delivered y'all, brought y'all out of darkness and into this body. I'm sure some of y'all friends, some people on y'all jobs are thankful and glad God saved you. They say, good gracious of life, that got to be a good God, got to be. Some folks say they believe God just for what he did for you. Because how you are, they say, if, if, if somebody can stop Miss Yvonne, good gracious of life, that got to be a God. Huh? Yes, yes. I know they said that about me. They said, what? You say? People laugh. Couldn't believe that. But they were thankful that God can do such wonderful and miraculous things. And he's just that good. God is just that good. And so Jesus, as he spoke these parables he and showing us trying to illustrate to us how much God loved the lost and the thing is he said a certain man had two sons he said the young of them said to his father he said he said father give me the portions of good that falls to me and he divided them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey to a far country and they are wasting this substance with riotous living. If you want to look at the first thing, I want you to look at, he said, give me the portions of good that falleth to me. In other words, give me what belongs to me. Give me my independence. I'm tired of being under your leadership. I'm tired of following your orders. I want to get away from my father. I want to live my life on my own terms. I want to do my own things. And he wanted to be his own person, and he was selfish and self-centered. He didn't say, please give me. He didn't say, would you or me? But he just said, give me what belongs unto me. Can, can, you, can you just see yourself out there? All you cared about is you. You don't care about nobody else. don't care about what you do and how much problems you're causing for other folks. All you cared about was you. I, I remember when I was young and in my daddy's house, I couldn't wait to get out from under my daddy's house. I can't wait till the day I get grown. I can't wait till the day when I get out there on my own. I, I say, man, look here. When I leave, boy, I'm going to drink myself drunk. I drunk myself so bad until I fell on myself in a white suit fell down in my own vomit and got right back up and started laughing huh oh lord have mercy that's how stupid i was huh and thinking that i was having a good time huh i want to be cut loose from you i'm tired of coming in at your hours i'm tired of doing what you say i'm tired of cleaning up like you want me to clean up you understand we want to be independent we we want to live life loose we want to do things our own way huh we don't want god word in our life. We tired of God. God, you deal with heaven. I'll deal with earth. Huh? We want to be our own boss. We want to tell God, I can live this life. I don't need your help. Huh? And I, I say that to my dad. I don't need your help. Do things on my own. One time I walked out thinking I was a man. Boy, look at him. Nobody would take me in the house for one thing. 
I want to hear to tell y'all something, boy. I knew what time dinner was going to be served. And I know my sisters and brothers would not care if I got a plate. Oh, I didn't get a plate. If you ain't at the table, it's 15 of us, y'all. If you wasn't at the table, you didn't get it. Wasn't no leftovers in our house. You was left out, but there wasn't nothing left over for you, huh? You either be there with food served, or you wasn't going to get you a meal, huh? And, and, and the thing is that this here, I didn't think about that until I was outside and they had nobody to give me nothing, nobody to feed me, huh? I said, oh, look here, I got to come back home, huh? All that boasting and all that talk, hey, that went out the window. I had to come back home. But the thing is that this here, he really just wanted his independence. And when we out there in the world, it's living our life, we think that we can just do without God. No matter what, we figure we got the idea, we got the blessed plan. And the thing about this here is this here, is that his father gathered it all together and he gave him what belonged to him. Huh? Because you know you can't go out there without no money. I'm here to tell y'all young people. Y'all ain't got a job and you ain't got no money, don't leave home. Because ain't nobody going to take care of you. Ain't nobody going to look out for you. You better have some money. So he knew he needed some money to go out and do what he wanted to do, or the plans that he had. And then he wanted to get as far away from his family and far away from his father as he could. And then the Bible say he went in the far country, and there he wasted his substance with riotous living. Huh? You know something? The thing about us is this year, is that when we are out there in that world, God has blessed us, sometimes with our health, with our right mind, and, and, and to do things, and be blessed, and stuff like that, and we waste it. We take that good mind God gives us, and we fill it full of drugs and alcohol, huh? We take that, 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 that good body that God gives us, and we lay with anything and everything, huh? We, we take what God has blessed us with, he blessed us with things, and, and we are just let, like it ain't nothing. We don't care nothing for it. But you know what, God say, it's yours, huh? It's your life. You can live it the way you want to live it. That's one thing about God. I, I let you have it. You can do what you want. And the thing about us is this here. I want you to look at in the book of Romans, the first chapter. I, I, I don't want to live my life my way. <laughs> I, I, have you ever figured out the things you could do when you live your life your way? Huh? When you say, God, I don't want you in my life. I got my life to live and I know what goods for me and I know what I'm going to do for myself, huh? You know, I want, I want to place my life in my hand. I'm going to tell you something. The Bible tells us about people who want to place their lives in their hands and do the things that they want to do. You know, I can act a fool without God. I'm telling you. And look what it says in Romans, the first chapter. I'm going to start from that 21st verse. It says this here. It says, because that when they knew God, he said, they glorified him not as God, and neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible men, and the bird, and the four-footed beast, and creeping things. He said, wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to the dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. For this cause, God gave them up to the vile affection for even that women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one towards another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. You see, when you don't have God, you worship anything. You worship roaches, you worship ants, you worship birds, you worship wind, you worship stars, you worship anything. You don't worship these flowers. Because when God is outside your life, you begin to start thinking of everything as being a God, even yourself as being a God. I, I, I noticed that they begin to do unnatural things. When you take God out of your life, you don't care about how you do people. You don't care about how people feel about you. You begin to just think about you and yourself. You begin to waste 
all. Every, everything that God blesses you will waste it. Everything that God gives you, you will waste it. God blesses you with another day. You take that day instead of praising God and you praise a roach. Huh? You take that day and you begin to praise a rat. God, when he gives you up to yourself, you can't do nothing right. You can't walk as a sensible person. You begin to be doing things what people call insane. Okay, how could you do your body like that? How could you do that to yourself? How could you have those kind of feelings? And the Bible said they, they, they are without feelings. They don't have natural affection. They, they just go on doing everything. And I know what I was out there. I was doing everything I was big enough to do and acting any way I wanted to act and didn't care about what you said or what you thought about it. Huh? Because I was without God. You without God is a terrible case. And no, there's no psychiatrist that can help you. You have to have God in your life. I told people, I didn't come to my senses until I got God. Didn't know nothing about life. Didn't know which way to go, which, what to do, how to act. But when I got God in my life, all of a sudden I know how to do go, I know how to choose, I know how to discern, I know what's right, I know what's wrong, but without God I don't have a measuring stick I don't have a guideline and see that's the thing that you don't understand God is your guide God is your rule that you walk by, God is the word that you keep within yourself God is your discernment between right and what's wrong God is the choice that you make you're going to make the choices according to God's will all before you make choices according to yourself. <clears throat> and, and this boy, he said, I'm going to get far away from my father. And the thing about this here, God, he can't do nothing about the choices that you make in life. Do you know that? You can choose death. He said, behold, I have placed before you life and death. You can choose death huh but God say choose life but you can choose death one thing God will never take away from you is your power to choose you can choose to live for God and you can choose to live for the devil you can choose to go to hell and you can choose to go to heaven God gives that to you and he ain't got nothing to do with it when you make the choice understand with every thing that's pulled every switch that's pulled and every choice that's made there comes with it a consequence those are the things that we don't sometimes look in the choices that we make in life sometimes we think that God is just going to overlook some of the things that we do in life some things do get by but then there are some things that you can't change you can't change the thing that you did yesterday it's done and it's over with you are the plan for the future and the best way to plan for the future is to have God in your life. Your mind make you feel like everything that you do and everything that you say is right. No matter what the preacher say, no matter what the word of God says, your mind tells you everything that I do is right. When I was out there and I was lost as anybody else, I didn't feel lost. I didn't feel like I was doing anything wrong. I didn't feel like I was hurting anybody. Feeling but I was just as lost as I could be. I never came to the light while I was out there in the world. I never thought cussing you out would mean anything. I never thought taking everything that belonged to you that didn't belong to me meant anything because I was lost without God in my life. You can't think reasonable out there. Look at some of the things that people are doing without God in their lives. And you say, is that reasonable? Will people do things like that? Yes. Because without God restraining you, without God holding you, thank God, God held us back a lot of times before we came. You wouldn't be in church today if God hadn't sometimes stopped you, held you back. Even when you was just as big headed and hard headed as can be God still held you back from doing some of the things that you probably would have been dead for by the day Bible say he wasted his life in riotous living living for pleasure and this life only isn't that a shame when you only live for this life only some people think that this is all to life 
what we have here in this world. And this really ain't nothing. The Bible says it's like a vapor. It's just going to be here for a little while, and then it's gone. And yet people are giving all they got for a vapor, giving all they got for just a moment of time, doing everything they could for this life. And this life has nothing to offer you but death. And God's trying to tell you about another life, a life that, that, that gives you abundant life, a life that's everlasting, a life that's eternal. God wants to change the way that you live in. Now look at verse 14 through 16. Look at what the young man did. Not only did he waste everything, the Bible says when he spent all. Then it says this here, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would faint, have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. You ever had it where it went from bad to to worse <laughs> because look at here it went from bad to worse it was bad enough he spent everything and I mean he spent it all he spent everything that his father had given him and then right after he spent everything then look what happened famine came in you know sometimes we never plan for that bad day. We think everything's going to always be the same. Oh, I can run out here and do this, and I can run out there, thinking the time is in our hand, and you don't have a moment in your hand. All you got is what God's going to give you, and you better use that time wisely. He didn't use his time wisely. He wasted his life. He wasted everything that God had blessed him with, and he didn't count nothing as being worth anything. And the Bible says he spent all, not knowing that the Tomorrow is coming and don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And the Bible say a famine came up and it was over the whole land. It's bad not to have something to eat. But then when you in a city where everybody ain't got nothing to eat or you in a country where everybody is poor and everybody's like it and you don't have nothing. That mean nobody cares about you. That mean everybody for themselves you got something that's yours I got something that's mine but every man is for himself because the Bible say no man gave unto him anything he was hungry all the time yeah boy that's the worst thing to be hungry every day hungry every moment hungry every hour I mean things got so bad until every time he looked around even the pigs was getting the meal and he wasn't getting nothing he was hungry all the time. I know when I be fasting sometime when I, I'm talking about my early days, y'all. I'll be fasting all the time. I'm walking around on the job and people say, you look hungry. I say, good gracious. I ain't want to tell them I was fasting, but I looked at hungry because I be looking at that food. I say, oh, Lord. You, why you had to put fast in the Bible? Why you had to tell me I had to fast and pray? Oh, Lord. I'm going without my lunch. Lord, I'm going to die. If I don't eat something, I was driving down 95, and I thought 95 was a chili dog. I said, Lord, look at that chili dog. But guess what? Yeah, I got over that. I got to a point where I could do it. But when it first started, boy, I walk around. I want y'all to know I'm hungry, but I shouldn't be. You know what the Bible says? You ain't supposed to go around. You're supposed to put it all on your head. Keep a joyful look, looking like you normally do. Well, I didn't know that scripture at that time. <laughs> Shoot, I walked on the job. I they say, Boy, you look at your people say that you look hungry. I don't know what hungry look like, but I looked at hungry when I was stopped. Look at here, but that's what they are saying. I don't know if I was just rubbing my belly, <laughs> smacking my lips, <laughs> or just saying <laughs> something <laughs> told them. <laughs> I was hungry. Some told them I didn't have no food in me. Some said to them, say, boy, look at here. And I'm calling myself a Christian, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. But brother, look at here, I was hungry. So I know how this man felt. He was hungry all the time. And he nobody and didn't think about it. Ain't nobody gonna give him nothing to eat. He's cut himself off from everybody. 
things went from bad to worse. And not only the Bible say he would fill his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. Because no man gave, you know, when you get hungry, I, I, there were some things I said I wouldn't eat. But somebody told me one time, my dad, I believe, was he said, you ain't never been hungry. You know, you sit at the table, you tell, tell your mom and daddy, I ain't eating that. You know, I don't eat that kind of food. So the guy, we, we in America, we real particular about what we eat, you know. And they walked over there in Africa, and them folks them put down them lizards and say, eat. I said, eat what? <laughs> One man came up to me with some worm, chocolate worms. And I'm looking at it. He eating them like, mm, man, they good. And he offered me some. And I said, hey. <laughs> <laughs> they were, you know, I know the Bible say, when I was set before you, eat, <laughs> take it no thought for conscience sake. And I thought about the worms inside my belly. I think they could be moving around. Oh, no. Uh-uh. But I mean, but he just ate them like they wasn't nothing. And I said, oh, my gosh. How can somebody eat worms like that? Yeah, you ain't hungry. You understand? When you get hungry, brother, you eat worms, you eat lizards. <laughs> You eat chocolate roaches and whatever they else they got out there. You just ain't hungry. You can sit up there and be all cute all you want to hear in America. But some folks, boy, they'll be telling you, brother, you look here. You ain't going to eat him. That dog is gone. He, I know his name Fred, but he'll be dead <laughs> when I get through with him. <laughs> hey, man, hey, man. I remember, I remember Sister Maria, she didn't like me because I, I had a, a lobster. He was alive. And they brought you know they bring them lost to the show to you. Well, he snapped at me. I said, boy, you gone, you gone. <laughs> and when they brought it back, she said, how could you eat that lobster, Pastor Boone, knowing that he was alive? I said, that was good, 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 good. <laughs> I had mercy where mercy is due. <laughs> but I don't have mercy when it don't call for mercy. At that time, it didn't call for mercy. <laughs> Amen, amen. That's the word, y'all. God said, I have mercy on whom I will have mercy. That's the word. Amen, amen. <laughs> but the thing is, he was hungry, and he was willing to eat what the pigs ate. Huh? Because he was hungry. Then the Bible said this here, 17th verse. It said, when he came to himself, he said, how many high servants? My father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as thy high servant. I'm going to tell you something. Some, some things in life will bring you down. Some things, you know, you, you, you say, I ain't, I'm not going to do it. There are some things in life that will humble you. All that air in your head, all that helium in your body, God has a pen that will pump it and bring you down to where you will come to your senses. You just running buck wild. You just doing all you big enough to do. Acting all kind of way. Treating God like he don't mean nothing to you. I'll go when I want to go. I'll come to church when I feel like coming to church. I'll Hear the word, I'll pray when I feel. Just going on, doing what you want to do, just thinking that you can just hold life in your hand. But I want you to understand something. Jesus said, when he came to <coughs> himself, you know something? One thing about hardship and especially being hungry, you begin to reflect. <laughs> you begin to start thinking about, how did I get to this pig pen? <laughs> How, how did I come to this state in my life? Because you brought yourself there. But you, you begin to now start to thinking about what caused me to get here. You see, God's working on you then. 
Because you, as long as you out there and ain't thinking you're doing nothing wrong and ain't feeling no bad, nothing, you, you're going to go do what you want to do. But there come a time when your big bad self get humbled. Huh? And some of us, it took the hospital. Some of us, it took losing a job. Some of us, it took uh, some family leaving us. Huh? But God got a way of humbling you. Huh? You walk out with a big head. You walk around out there for years and years thinking that you got everything under control. You can do it and you don't need God's help. But God got a way of letting you know you can't survive without me. You can't get up in the morning without me. Your every breath, your every move is because of me. And you be thinking to yourself that it's you that's doing it all. I know I thought it was. I heard Dick say he thought he did God a favor when he came to the Lord. Oh, he didn't know. He didn't do God no favor and he didn't come to the Lord. The Lord brought him in here. And you yourself, you can do all you want to do. But except God draws you, you can't get saved. But one day, all in your big stuff, I, I tell people, I, I've heard people say, oh, you would never get me in that church. Haven't you said that yourself? Or oh, you would never get me on my knee. Oh, haven't you said that yourself? You would never get me going down there praying, going to revival. Oh, haven't you said that yourself? Or oh, many times you said it yourself. But God got a way of humbling you and bringing you to the place of repentance because you yourself won't repent. You yourself won't humble yourself. But God said, I got something that will humble you. I got something that'll make you think. I got something that'll make you meditate on this thing all night long. How did I get into this predicament? How did all these problems come into my life? God got a way of making you sit down and say mm, what's happening here God got a way of doing it your mama can't do it your brother can't do it your sisters can't do it but God got a way of bringing you down and bringing you back to your senses he never thought he'd get to a point where he thought hog food was a delicacy I know he, he, I, he never thought that. There are some people right now, I met them when I was working in the, in the jail system. They ain't never think they'd be in jail. They ain't never think they'd be eating jailhouse food on a Sunday. And they ain't never think they'd be sitting down, sitting on a bunk, ain't got but one little sheet and one blanket with holes in it, and roaches running all around and rats running all around. They ain't never think they'd be sitting there in a cell. And it took that cell, sitting in that condition, for them to be humbled. You see, you go out there and you buy your drugs and you don't get caught. Oh, you so confident. You're going to get your drugs and you're going to get your drugs. And ain't nobody going to ever catch you. God got somebody. <laughs> he going to see if you're going to humble yourself. <laughs> but you're going to go out there one day and somebody else going to catch you with your drugs. <laughs> and then they bring you into a place where you don't want to be. Because I'm telling you, because depending on how much drugs you got on you, you might be in that place uh, for a long time. <laughs> you may not come out in 30 days. <laughs> you may not come out in six months. <laughs> you may not even come out in three years. But you just keep on going over there and buying your drugs and getting high every Friday. <laughs> getting high every Saturday, getting high every Sunday, and they're buying your drugs. And brother, one day you're going to go over there because God said, I'm going to give him this chance. I'm going to give him that chance. Oh, he's thinking now he's going to get away. He think no, nobody see him. He think no, nobody know about him. But God got away. I've seen preachers who's been buying drugs and they thought that God wouldn't know about it. Come to jail. And I looked at him. I said, wait a minute. Ain't you pastor so-and-so? Yeah, but uh, I don't know this man and took me to this house uh, and he told me that uh, somebody need prayer. Prayer at a crack house? Uh, be serious. Uh, you got to tell me something better than that. Uh, but you see, you just kept going there uh, and it just kept going 
going there and he didn't know one day God was going to set him up and now I'm going to tell y'all about a sting they set it up just like the regular drug dealer and you come there and you buy and moment you buy the paddy wagon is right around the corner I used to work on them buses and they be bringing them around there in that corner all scrapped up and they crying Ooh, it's too late now you didn't have your opportunity you thinking that you could just live your life the way that you want to live it but I'm here to tell you God got a way of humbling you and bringing you down to a point where you say you never eat that you say you never do that you say you'll never live like that but look at here you in a cell about so big and all you got is one TV and everybody fighting over that TV you might even have to fight for your living and there you are you had your freedom you had your way you could have been to church you could have been at the prayer meeting but no you thinking that you got your life in your hand God said okay I'm going to send him to the pig pen in that pig pen everybody I know when they get to the pig pen they go into meditation they begin to think why am I in the pig pen why that I let this happen to me why did all this trouble come into my life I, why did I not open up my eyes and hear what folks was telling me understand folks cared about me understand folks loved me but I kept on going not listening to nobody God got a way of bringing you down I've had deacons preachers all kind of people coming to church Doing that little stuff on the side, thinking that God don't know nothing about it. Oh, I think, you know, you, you just keep on dallying with the fire. Otherwise, you get burned. And then when they get burned, everybody gets sorry. Everybody feels shame. But see, the thing is, is here, when you don't have God, when God is outside your life, brother, you don't think about what could be. You don't think about you could be hungry. You don't think about you could be homeless. You don't think about you could be without money. You don't think about your health could get away from you. You don't think about those things. But God has a way of letting you know these things are real. And they're real. And God is able to bring them into your life as well as take them out of your life. You understand? Bible say, I'll put this down. Out of insanity and back to reality. Ain't nothing like waking up. Ain't nothing like seeing the real thing. Huh? You know, some folks, they live in Alice in Wonderland. They're just thinking that life is just partying and just doing everything you want to do. But then one day, reality sets in. And they wake up. And when they wake up, then they realize it ain't all that you thought it was going to be. And the thing is, this is he woke up. He came to his senses and he said I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him father I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son he said make me as one of thy high servants he said my father's house he said God was so good he said even the servants they had enough and they had some to spare I, I don't care what folks say about my life in Christ it's better <laughs> Huh? You, you, you go on out there and live your life where you this is the best life there is. Not only do God give you enough, He gives you some to spare. Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, when he fed those 5,000, he gave them enough. But the Bible says he had some leftovers. That's one good thing about this life. Ain't it good to have leftovers, huh? I didn't know how good leftovers was until I got out of my mama's house. I finally go to the refrigerator I had some leftovers, huh? That's what a leftover is, huh? I thought a leftover was a left out, but a leftover is you got some food from the meal before, huh? But the thing is that this here, God will bless you more than you can ever think. He'll do better for you than anything. You see, that's the thing. People don't know how good God is. 
Huh? They just don't know. You, you, I ain't going nowhere. You can say what you want to say. I'm not. I'm just like Joshua. If, if, if it seemed evil to serve the Lord, then go find you somebody. I ain't going nowhere. You can act the way you want to act, do what you want to do. I'm going to stay with God. God is the best thing that ever happened to me. I don't care. If I, I might have some bad days. I might have some sad days. But God's still the best thing that ever happened to me. I ain't going nowhere. Ain't got nowhere to go. Ain't nobody as good as God. Can you say that? My mama ain't as good as it. My father ain't as good as it. Even that woman that say she loved me, she ain't as good as it. Because God is the best thing. You can leave. I ain't leaving God. You can go. I ain't going away from God. You can turn your back on him. I'm not going to turn my back on God. God is the best thing. If he'll do that for the hired servant, not the true son, but the hired servant, he gave them enough and more. Huh? And, him, and here I am, he say, I'm perishing. <laughs> I'm starving to death. <laughs> Can't even get me a twisty bar. Huh? I'm just as hungry as I could be. But God is doing things for his people in such a way that look at him, the world begin to recognize it. They begin to say, wait a minute. God's feeding them in a 